You're watching Telecom TV from the Etsy 5G Network Infrastructure Summit. And I'm joined now by Jörg Meyer, who is chairman of 3GPP CT. Jörg, thanks for joining us on Telecom TV. Now, we've been focused over the past year or so a lot on radio access standardization, but what about the core network? First of all, what does CT cover and what's your remit? So CT stands for Core Network and Terminals. 3GBP is split up in basically uh, three parts. It's uh, system and architecture, um, which has the general guidance for the whole of 3GBP, um, RAN, the radio access network, and then CT, where it's Core Network and Terminals, where we basically do the stage three work. So the real, the protocol works uh, for the core network, uh, that's done by us. And um, I'm chairing that group. I'm also, in due to that, a uh, liaison person towards IETF. So anything that is like protocol related has its home in CT. So protocols are an important aspect of the core network. Is it a case of looking to see what existing protocols are fit for purpose today or what we might need to, to look towards tomorrow, especially with the work that Etsy is doing on next generation protocols? There's things ongoing. Uh, we saw today in the presentation. So uh, Etsy NGP is one body that came up uh, looking specifically at the needs of mobile networks and what IP, TCP IP is lacking uh, to support uh, uh, mobile networks most efficiently. That's a very interesting uh, initiative and it's fully recognized by us. Uh, the problem is at the moment that with the given 3GPP uh, release timelines that we have for 5G, this falls a bit uh, under additional issues at the moment. So whether we really have um, problems to solve on transport layer level, that is one thing we have to see. The other thing is, um, there are several players in this game. So we, we see that uh, there is information-centric networking, there is the IETF working on a TCP replacement which is called QUIC, which is uh, currently only looking at the HTTP, and then we have also um, NGP, which is more looking at a holistic approach and saying how can we do this, in the, can we change the internet in a way that it's best suited for the mobile access. Um, this discussion is very important to take place and it's also important to take place now, but I don't think it's something we should uh, take as one of the major headlines into 5G, but rather give us a bit more time to look into that. You mentioned timelines and we all know that the 5G timelines are very, very tight. There's a lot of work to be done. What are the, the milestones, the major milestones that CT needs to address in order for us to complete 5G standardization work? The, the 5G spans over three releases in 3GPP. We are always release driven. The release deadline is for us a sacred thing. We shouldn't touch that. Um, release 14 that just ended practically was a study phase and now we're starting with uh, release 15. We're in the middle of it more or less. Uh, the architecture work is currently being done. This is where you see the most progress and the most work uh, currently brought forward. Uh, that is on SA level. And now the work slowly more or less trickles down into the CT groups, where we have to look at uh, protocol realizations. And we have more or less for release 15, um, something like 15 months left. That is uh, June 2018. We most likely get three months of leanway to clean up some things, so we're talking September 2018, for release 15, where we need a base system established, something that works. And then we talk about the second phase, that is uh, release 16, and there uh, we go until 2020. What's the details of release 16? That has to be seen. And what are the main challenges? What are the areas where you need to spend a lot of focus to ensure that core network standards are, are ready for 5G? The whole issue of virtualization and slicing is something that is discussed everywhere. We also saw this uh, here at the summit. Everybody is interested in it. Um, 
we know there will be a certain amount of protocol work needed, how much we can employ from other bodies like IETF, for example, um, that has to be seen. So we need to investigate this very thoroughly. Uh, we have one of the topics that is uh, heavily discussed on stage two level at the moment is uh, service-based architecture. That we're practically um, transforming the core to be more flexible to have the network functions communicate via APIs directly with each other. Uh, going a bit away from the protocol paradigm that we had in the older releases, we have to find out um, to what level this should happen in release 15, how much we can achieve, uh, what impact this has on the reliability of the system. So these are major issues that we have to look at. The other thing is obviously low latency, where we have to work closer together with the RAN groups and find an end-to-end -end solution to make the delay as, as small as possible. Jörg, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much.